Today I'm going to show you how to build a simple set of deck stairs where you can use this math to build yourself uh, some house stairs, something simple. Well, we don't have any headroom clearance or anything like that. But I just want to show you the hows and the whys, what to be aware of. So if you run into different scenarios, how you can combat those situations and know what to do at that time. Okay, so first off, you can kind of see what we've got here. This is a five riser set of stairs. Now we'll get into the math, but you just count this as one, two, three, four, five risers. Okay. Now one thing that you want to know, just a general rule, if you have five risers, you always have one less run. So your run is this. So your it's not technically a tread, it's a run. So one, two, three, four. So four runs. Now, knowing that, you can calculate how far out you need to measure. You can calculate how far your stairs run. The reason I, I say all that is I did some preliminary math, figured out, okay, I have a five riser stair, four runs, each runs 10 inches. I'm gonna be 40 inches away from my wall. So I just go roughly 40 there. Then what I want to do is I want to figure out my total rise. So total rise is from the place where you're going to end up stepping on to the floor or the ground or anything like that. So all I did is I just leveled this bad boy. I do it in two or three spots. Doing a deck is a little trickier. But essentially you just want to get it level, measure it, Luckily, when I measured left and right side, I was within an eighth of an inch. I ended up at 36 and a quarter total rise. Now, I won't go create like all the crazy math, but at the end of the day, you can't be more than an eight inch rise. So here, I'll just use this super duper math board here. 36 and a quarter is 36.25. Now, if you go divided by eight because you can't be higher than an eight inch rise let's just figure that out that'll tell me how many risers so if I go 36.25 divided by eight it's 4.53 rises but you can't have a point rise you need to have a full number so you round that up you round that up to five so then again, you go 36 and a quarter divided by five risers equals X amount per rise, which is 7.25. So 7.25 inches per riser, okay? If you have a weird number, like let's say you have 0.375 what's 0.375 into inches so if you want to break it into sixteenths this is 0.375 of an inch and if you're calculating into sixteenths now all you metric guys are going to give me the grills but we got to do it the hard way so that the easy way is always easy right 0.375 times 16 sixteenths in an inch gives you so this equals six sixteenths which then breaks down to three eighths so if you were 7.375 you'd be seven and three eighths just to give you the hard route or how to figure out a decimal to a fraction okay so we have five risers at seven and a quarter the next thing we need to know is I'll go grab our tread material and uh, that's the other thing we need to be aware of so for a set of stairs my run I typically just go a 10 inch run and that's usually because your your boards or your tread material are five and a half each and you want a one inch overhang or a one inch nosing so you want your tread material to be 11 so you want that one inch overhang but your actual run for your math is just based on rise over run so don't get confused between run 
and what a tread is. With a deck stair, you typically just reverse engineer based on your tread material. This is five and a half inch material, so I'll do two of those. That's 11 inch tread. So therefore my run is one inch less than that for the overhang, so I just go a 10 inch run. Now in houses, you, you can manipulate the run based on how far you have from A to B horizontally, and you can manipulate that. Um, that's why I showed you, count the amount of treads, times it by what your run is, you can calculate how far your stairs run horizontally. Okay, now I'll grab my square and my jig. I had to write on this bad boy because everyone throws them out, I don't know why. But this is a jig that I like to use for a two foot square. Now when you're talking, this is the square, obviously the silver part, and this just sets my rise and run, rather than using stair gauges, and I'll show you why this is such a handy tool. But the, this, this side of your square is always your rise, and this is always your run. So whether you're doing roof pitch or stairs, rise over run, that's, that's how it is, it's very simple. And we don't want to overcomplicate this. So what I did is I set my square to seven and a quarter on the rise and 10 inch on the run. And the other thing I did is I just mark right here where exactly 10 inches is. And I'll show you why once we start laying this out on some stringers. Okay. <clears throat> Let's lay this out. Okay, so this one's already drawn out. It gets confusing because unless you're the guy making the marks and figuring it out, you, these marks sometimes mean nothing. Looks like gibberish. So this is this is what it is. This is what it's going to look like. This here stair. These are my runs, my risers. This is the plumb cut, where it cuts vertically. So when I lay this down here, this is how the stair is actually laid out on this board. So when you look right here, this is a plumb cut, and that's where it attaches to the actual deck. And then this is my top tread. So when I match that up. So when I lay this out, you know exactly what I mean and what's going on and what direction to look at. So how did we get there? That's where the super handy jig comes in is it doesn't matter which way you flip it, turn it. So I just select a way that works for me. And usually when I start, I just start random. I just start at the end of the board. I make my level cut. And then I make this mark. That's my riser. Now because that's right there, how do I make this mark? Well then I just simply go like this. I don't flip it or turn it. And then I just line the pencil marks back up. Continue that over. You notice how the jig allows me to make marks. My pitch stays the same. I, I can be way off the board and I can do a level cut. So if you had a stair gauges where they just clamp onto the square, you'd have to be at least this far away at all times so you can actually hit wood material when you're lining her up. So anyway, you start here and you just start at the top of the stair. Now one thing you don't want to forget is to make the mark right here where your 10 inch run mark is. So you know that when you move this down, you can line it up with that pencil mark and then you just go rise, run. Don't forget, make your 10 inch mark right there, move it down, okay? And you just repeat that. Make your mark, move it. Do your rise and your run, make your mark. Now because this is a five riser stair, then what I do, I gotta count how many risers I have. So when it's laying flat, I count this as one. One, two, three, four, five. So this is my bottom riser. So I know to stop there. So what I do is I get my square set up, I make my mark, and I also wanna make my last mark right here, which is the true, this is the very bottom of the stairs based on math. 
Okay, so if you look right here, I'll get into why there's two marks. This is the actual seven and a quarter mark here. But why did I put the line up there? Why did I shorten the bottom riser? So let's go back over to the deck and I'll show you why. So you have to know what type of tread material you're using and also if you have risers or not. Because that's once you have your stair and all your math, your rise over your run doesn't change. You lay out your stairs like we did and then you do your subtractions based on what type of tread material and what type of riser. Um, yeah, so that's where things can get confusing, but just try to remember it's always just rise over run. So why did I shorten this one an inch? That's because my tread material is an inch. So that way when I step from the ground to here is seven and a quarter. If I wouldn't have shortened this, I would have actually had an eight and a quarter rise and it would have buggered me all up. Now the other place that this comes in handy is up here because now I've lowered it an inch. I'm actually eight and a quarter from here to the deck. But when I add my tread material, now from here to here, seven and a quarter. Now it doesn't matter if I, if I add an inch, let's say I'm adding an inch all the way from the bottom. So I add an inch here. So I'm seven and a quarter to the top. Now because this is seven and a quarter to seven and a quarter, and these are all the same, if I add an inch, an inch, an inch, and an inch, they're all seven and a quarter from finish to finish to finish, okay? But just don't forget that this is eight and a quarter to my line. Once it's finished material, seven and a quarter rise. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And it's usually just the bottom riser that you shorten whatever your tread thickness is. Now, when do you change if you have risers, it typically only affects the first plumb cut. So how do I explain that? I'm not doing, I'm doing open risers. I'm not adding anything to this. So this is finished, not adding anything here. So when I, when I put this on, I'll have a one inch overhang. I'm not adding anything here. But let's say I was adding material there. Now this run is one inch longer. So whatever your riser material is on the face, you have to shorten that by that much. So that way, if I add an inch here, I take it off here, move it ahead so that it's 10 inches from here to here. And that's because I'm not adding any material right here. So it all depends on what you're adding and where. Okay, so if that was that situation, that's the only time you cut that. You don't, it doesn't affect anything else because I'm adding riser here, 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 and here. So it doesn't affect any, anything else. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. If not, just watch it again. That's the beauty of video. Okay, so I'm just going to start cutting. Um, I hope you guys get the point. If you have questions, just ask questions. Uh, like the video if you like it, subscribe to the channel if you like the content, and don't be afraid to ask lots of questions, and if you want me to run through more stair math on how to calculate headroom clearance and all that, just let me know. Um, okay, let's build these things. So if that didn't make sense, another way that it might help you just visualize it better is just having it laid out on your board. So like I said before, I line that up, I make my riser mark, and my tread mark. I know that this is my last riser so I stop there and then I can look at this and I can say okay I'm adding an inch to my tread so that means this line has to move an inch so that's why that mark is there so I simply just take my tape measure I make a one inch mark I go from four to five bang make a mark line that up there and then because I have my super cool jig, I just move that to the other side. My angle's the same, bang. And that's, now when I cut that, that's the bottom of my stair. And once again, with the riser material, if you're not sure how to visualize it, 
this is the riser. If I'm adding riser material here, I have to shorten this there, to, you know, based on this scenario. One thing I almost forgot to tell you about is make sure when you're doing deck stairs is put this cleat in along the bottom. You can see how I've laid it out on the stair treads just with our square jig. And then I just notched it in so it's flush with the bottom of the stringer. And, and that way there's never been a set of deck stairs that sat perfectly level and flat. It's usually sitting in a situation like this where it's dirt and unlevel. That'll help keep the stairs from going up and down and waving all over the place. It's a good practice to, to just do on every set of stairs, whether it's house, interior, or a deck for the exterior. Um, and then let's just jump over. You can kind of see how an open riser set of stairs would look. And luckily the customer, like we let this sit overnight. The customer looked at it. She didn't like the open riser. So she asked us to put a closed riser in. So now you'll be able to visualize how and why you got to shorten that first run. So let me grab this piece here. This is our riser material. So if you come, if you look over here, this gives you the mock-up or the idea of what's happening here. But if I put this riser material on now, then I'm essentially flush with my treads. Then if I did that down here and put these on, and put another, put this riser on, you see I have my one inch nosing here, but I have nothing here. So now that the, the customers asked me at the perfect time, now I can actually just shorten up that top tread. The rest corresponds and, and complements itself, so we don't have to do anything there. So we'll shorten these up. And then because we're closing in the risers, the reason I didn't do the cleat to cross the top here is because I didn't want people to be able to see it. That's why I just toenailed all my, my stringers into the wall here. But now what I'll do is I'll actually, I'll shorten everything up, the thickness of the, the riser, and then I'll actually take an additional inch and a half off these middle ones. That'll be my backer, it'll just be a two by four, and then it's just easier for me to install the set of stairs. I'll just plunk it on and then all I have to do is put on my risers and my treads and I'm done. So I got a little routering to do, but uh, we'll show you the set of stairs when it's all said and done. So we got to take off 11 16 from the back of these. Now, instead of just measuring from the back, depending on how accurate your cuts are, I would just measure from the front. We're supposed to have a 10 inch run, so just 10 minus 11 16 So if I do that, I'm just going to mark that out for you real quick which is nine and five sixteenths right there. But then I'm gonna take off an additional inch and a half because I want a ledger to run all the way through here. As you can see, I got them all marked out. You just grab the jig, slam her in there. You can go on that side or this side's a little easier. And just make your marks. Doink, doink, doink. I've already cut the two end stringers. I only cut them 11 16 shy. And then, uh, yeah, I'll just cut these. I'll show you how awkward things get now that she's half built. And watch your digits, folks. to do a Van Dam move at the end there darn it okay let's just double check my math should be nine and five sixteenths from the back here which is good and then when we add 11 sixteenths that brings us to 10 and then everything else just works out automatically after that so you can see when it was open riser stair I didn't want this this cleat on the back but now that we're closing the risers in this is a lot easier to install the stairs. I don't have to install each stringer individually. Now I just screw off this ledger and yeah, 
I have a nice stable base there. I have that stabilizer at the bottom. I have these cleats here for just backing for my posts. So I have nice strong posts. And now I have everything pre-cut. Now the easy part is just banging it all together and uh, she'll be a nice finished set of stairs here in a minute. Okay, so just in case anything I said in the past didn't make any sense, now we should be 10 inch run. Everything added, just added to itself. 10, 10, 10. So once you know those few little tricks, it makes everything else easier and uh, treads go on and pretty simple now. So that's how you build a set of deck stairs. I'm glad the customer decided to do the closed riser. I think it is a lot nicer in the end. And you know, up until now they didn't look that great, but once they're all finished, man, they, they look like a sharp set of stairs. So anyway, I hope that helps you guys. And uh, thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you next time.